All right, joining me also is the presidential candidate of the Boot Party, Sunday Adenuga, to discuss issues in Nigeria's electoral system. Thank you for joining hey, me. Thanks, uh, Femi. How intense has the political season been for you and your party? And how would you say the new electoral law has enhanced the process? Yes, it's been very intense. And obviously, I would say yes, you know, as a nation and as a people, uh, political development is a journey. It's not uh, a sprint. You know, it's a journey that will continue to evolve. Now, the way I'm going to describe the Electoral Act 2022 is that it's a little step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Now, that said, uh, one of the uh, flaws that we found out and that we have made clear to INE um, is that the, the, the Electoral Act itself, 2022, was put together without majority of the stakeholders having involvement. And I will tell you what I mean. You can imagine as a political party, we requested for copy of the Electoral Act, Electoral Bill, before it, was, it became an act. We couldn't get hold of it. So majority of actors, players in the political system, uh, woke up and just found the Electoral Act. And that has put a lot of pressure on political parties. And I even think even by extension, INEC itself, you guys in the media may not be aware, but you might have seen some of the Twitter posts we have made. The INEC is going by way of technology, which is a good direction. We support them 100%, but it has to have face value. Because one thing about technology is that if you want to use technology to drive change, as we have been doing uh, as a political party, you also have to make that technology acceptable to the people. The current portal used by INEC, uh, I'm sorry to say, it's nothing to write home about yet, but we're coasting on it. And we're giving them absolute support that we'll keep going. But this could have been avoided if there had been clear user acceptance testing of this portal to ensure that uh, literally two and uh, some oversight, blind spot, will have been spotted long beforehand. Well, uh, Mr. Adenuga, people had expected that Boots Party and other political parties will form an alliance and become the third force to challenge the dominant PDP and the APC. What do you say? It, it, it's a good wish. It's a good wishful thinking. But I often tell people that be careful what you wish for. You see, quite a lot of people don't understand the way our political system works. Every political party today, according to uh, what we call alteration fault of the Constitution of the Federal Republic, I can't quote the specific section now, mm -hmm. but at the end of every electoral cycle, INEC has got the power, not just in the Electoral Act, entrenched in our Constitution to kind of mark the performance of political parties. So what that means is this, when people say political parties should come together, what's the framework that people are going to use to come together? I can, in my own experience, I can tell you the only organization that can put such framework together is actually INEC. And if INEC is not doing it, it is going to be extremely difficult for every political party. You've been seeing in the current climate, uh, just for even two, um, flag bearers to come together. Look at how difficult. Well, at, behind the scene, those who are not seeing what is happening behind the scenes may just think uh, maybe uh, Party A is an over ambitious, Party B is over ambitious. But you've got all your members. You you have where you have your strengths and weaknesses. So it will be good for political parties to come together. But to be honest with you, that framework has not been designed and. The, 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 that, that's the main reason why this desire, what people think about, they are not seeing it coming up. They're not seeing, um, uh, seeing they, they feel like, oh, people, sh people should just come together now. But it doesn't just work like that, unfortunately. As a political party, you are, you are measured on your own. If both party choose to go and work with another party today, INEC is not going to be bothered about that. When it comes to 2024, God willing, INEC is going to go out and use the, the criteria 
entrenching our constitution to judge each political parties. And what they are going to do is that they can deregister a political party. They've got the power. It's not enough for people to come up and say, oh, why do you deregister me? But the law is there. It's in the constitution, not even the electoral act. So this is what makes it very difficult. But again, like I said, it's a journey. It's a work in progress. And over time, people are going to be evolving. But we should also not forget that when you look at the big parties in Nigeria, if I can use those words, I don't mean we are a small party, but I'm also not naive not to know our strengths and weaknesses. Now, when you look at the frontline parties, PDP and APC of this world, especially those who established this party, they had one advantage that other parties doesn't have. That advantage was that when they were established as party, they had opportunity of resources that they used to establish their structures around the country of Nigeria. It is very, very tough for parties, for political process to be developed when uh, both the populists and even INEC officials and INEC as an organization just expect uh, Sunday Adenuga and Boot Party or any other party out there to just, to just go and fend for themselves and look for money to put those structures in play. And that's why you probably see the, 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 the money characterization of our politics, because the nature of the politics we play, uh, I often say that I think what Nigerians ask for probably does not exist. Yeah, okay. What we ask for doesn't exist. Well, there has been a decline in the turnout of voters on election day. Do you think 2023 election will be different? Now, bearing in mind that some of the factors that cause um, this decline have still not gone away. I would say I'm cautiously optimistic that things we uh, turn out of voters will increase. But I will tell you the, the, the study we did between 2019, when we were registered as a political party, and up to 2021, we released the report. And that finding, what we were just looking for was to see how elections were rigged in Nigeria. And what we found shocked us. And that was when we came to the conclusion that the only way we're going to stop uh, election rigging in our country and fraud in our electoral processes is making voting compulsory by law. And it's one of the things that we are, we've, been, we, we've been developing this policy. For me, as a flag bearer of Boot Party, and I've stated it, if he, if he make me, if I, if I become president for a day, that is what I'm going to do. I will make voting compulsory by law. And we should not be alarmed. The reason is this, let's first make this clear. People always think that when you set law or something in the constitution, it's not to punish anybody. It's just like when you look at a typical service level agreement. If service level agreement is not a legal document first and foremost, it's a working relationship. A government can tell its people, this is the direction we want you to go now. It's not like we're going to punish anybody if you don't vote, but you're going to give the direction and it's not new. In, there are a lot of countries in the world where voting is compulsory by law. And the fraud in our electoral process is this. Even those who brought election to us and democracy to us, for example, if you pick the United Kingdom, one of the electoral processes is compulsory. Is that you must register in the United Kingdom, for example. You, choose, you may choose not to vote, but we have a country like ours where it is not compulsory to register to vote. And it, at the same time, it's not compulsory to vote. You know, I keep telling people, we need to come to the table and listen to ourselves. What do we really want? Most Nigerian voters are in this. The politician hates Nigerians as much as Nigerians hate them. Where do we stand? The politicians argue that you make them to bribe people to come out on the day of election to vote. Look at the last election in, in Abuja, a city of highly educated people, highly informed people, it's bizarre to see the number of turnout. Well, my time is up on the program this week, but you can see this episode again on TVC News YouTube channel. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Also follow me on Twitter to keep up with the latest political news and updates. My handle is at Femi Akonde. TVC. Thank you for watching. See you next time.